little over a century ago, if you wanted to send a letter or any other kind of information from New York to San Francisco, you'd have to wait six months for an answer. Three months to get there and three months back around Cape Horn. Then in 1861, the cross-country trip was cut dramatically to 10 days by the Pony Express. The postage for your letter? One dollar for the first half ounce. That was one-third of your weekly salary for a 60-hour work week. Nineteen months later, though, the telegraph came along and the Pony Express galloped into the sunset, never to be heard from again. Then 53 years later, in 1915, Dit Dot Dick was replaced Hello, San Francisco, can you hear me? And the transcontinental telephone call had arrived, followed by the transatlantic service in 1927. Hello, I'm Floyd Calber. And that's not bad when you think about it. Just one lifetime between a letter in a Pony Express saddlebag and a direct line to London town. But we've come even further since then. Communication has gotten so much easier, cheaper, and faster that we're almost inundated with the amount of information that's available to us. Information explosion, one of the world's newest and most respectable cliches. But there's a problem. Information is like potato chips. And once you get started, you want more. If you're buying a car, for example, that's six, eight, ten thousand dollars you're spending. And you want as many facts as you can get. So you consult all the available information, depending on how much time and energy you have, of course. And it can be quite a job. Wouldn't it be so much better, so much more convenient, if you could just sit at your home or in your office, press a few buttons, and have the information you want come in to you, instead of your having to go out for it? Of course it would. That's why so much interest is being shown by many of the leading industrial nations of this world. It seems the time has arrived for the development of an electronic information service, EIS. Sweden, England, France, West Germany, Canada, Australia, and Japan are testing such systems. England has three different types working, Oracle, CFAX, and Prestel. Prestel is run by the post office, CFAX by the BBC, Oracle is privately owned. They all display their information on the home television screen. Canada's system Vista is a cooperative effort between Bell Canada, their government, and two communications enterprises. In the United States, there's also a lot going on. GT&E has purchased the rights to Prestel, while the Knight Ritter newspaper chain will soon be trialing a system in Coral Gables, Florida that also uses telephone lines. Two CBS affiliates are experimenting with a TV overlay idea in Salt Lake City and in St. Louis. And Cube, Warner Communications' two-way coaxial cable transmission system, has 30,000 subscribers in Columbus, Ohio. Not to be left out, the Telecomputing Corporation of America has a service called The Source, a time-shared computer system accessed via telephone lines. Looking further out and up, you can see the possibility of direct reception from satellites. All that's needed is an affordable rooftop antenna dish. There is also activity taking place within AT&T. Various organizations are investigating approaches to an electronic information service. Among them, the directory services section. You know, directory is a big business. There are 16 billion references to the white pages every year, 17 billion to the yellow pages. Directory revenues are over $2 billion annually now. They are expected to reach $3.4 billion in five years. And the white and yellow pages listings databases are mechanized. The basic question we all face is, can an electronic information access and retrieval service be offered to the public that will be widely accepted, have long-lasting value, and therefore be profitable? Addressing this question, Directory is now in the process of conducting a concept trial in the Albany area of the New York Telephone Company. 
The trial, which began August 24, 1979, will end January 31, 1980. The system's three components are a host computer where the databases are stored, terminals in homes plus businesses, and the telephone network which connects the databases with these terminals. The home of New York Upstate Directory Operations. This is the computer room, and in here are stored over 800,000 listings, covering a 10,000 square mile area. All of the white page listings for area code 518, all of the 518 yellow pages headings, listings, and brand names, and the Manhattan yellow pages, headings, listings, and brand names, segmented by consumer and business to business heading. The equivalent of over 40 directories in printed form. The computer also stores up to 250 personal numbers for each trial participant, plus 12 important numbers such as police, fire, and ambulance, and a set of five public announcements that are changed three times daily. The weather for local and travel purposes, sports, Dr. Joyce Brothers, and for all of the Pisces, Aquarians, and Scorpios out there, the daily horoscope. We'll show how these services are accessed in just a few moments. In addition to changing the public announcements three times daily, since the emphasis is on service, what can an electronic medium offer that printed pages cannot, the personal numbers are changed at the user's request, while the white pages listings are updated daily and the yellow pages monthly. In contrast to the once a year printing of the directories, the electronic service is more up to date more accurate and more usable. The control center, where the day-to-day -day operations of the trial are conducted, the supervisor's area, and the test area, where the data specialists are preparing the two terminals being used in this trial for the next group of participants, both business and residential. The business participants total eight, who never change throughout the trial, while the residences, 12 at any one time, change every three weeks totaling 72 homes. The user population for this concept trial comes to about 200 individuals in 80 different locations. The participants were selected by an independent research firm with two main criteria in mind. One, their expressed need for information. Two, their willingness to participate in the trial. Hello, Mrs. Johnson. This is Mary LaPointe from New York Telephone. How are you? Fine, thank you. I'm calling to ask if 2 p.m. tomorrow would be a convenient time for our trainer to come out to your house and show you how to operate the terminal that was installed yesterday. Fine. Pam Gale is her name and she'll be out to see you at 2 p.m. tomorrow. One of the service representatives who keeps in touch with all of the participants. And this is Pam Gale, the trainer who will go out to Mrs. Johnson's house tomorrow. Hi, Pam. Hi, Floyd. How long will the training session take tomorrow? between 20 and 25 minutes. What's been your experience so far? Have many of the users found the system difficult to operate? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, a number of children have been using the terminals and they haven't had any trouble at all. Fine. Let's see how the training is done. All right. Mrs. Johnson, to access your terminal, you just turn the switch located on the right side of the credenza. Right. And then you would depress the line one button and then pick up your phone. Uh, the system has been very easy to learn and operate by almost all users that we've encountered thus far. There aren't any special typing or directory assistance operator skills required to operate the system. Okay, what the system wants you to do now is use your log key to log in, and that's located right here. Okay, depress the log key. Yes. And that brings you to the screen that asks you for the terminal identification number which in your case is 161. So I type 161 in? That's right. And as we talked, it's 161 for this terminal, and you just put that in, as well as your user type, and you're the wife, which is a B in this case. This brings you to the main menu, which has the five features that are associated with the electronic information service. And the first two I wanted to show you are the important numbers in the personal directory. Okay, these are the ones that we mailed in to you. That's right. Uh, to look at the first one, which is the important numbers, you would just hit the A. All right, so in other words, that would be my, my letter A. That's right. 
And these are the 12 numbers that you gave us that you wanted included in your important numbers list, uh, doctor, fire, police. And you can automatically dial any of these numbers from this screen, which I'll show you a little bit later. To get back to the personal directory, you would just go back through main menu, which is located here. Okay, and so I'm going to hit a D. That's right. Do you remember any of, the, any of the names that you put in? Yeah, I have several friends with an M. All right, let's try that one. You put an M. And you gave us some Martins and some McLucases. Okay. And that's all you do for personal directory. The other features that are available, I'd, I'd like to show you, you have to go back through main menu again. And the yellow pages that we have in the system are for the 518 and the 212 area. The system is, is well, very powerful and very pages. fast. Uh, the so response the, time has been about two seconds for each access. You live in the Albany area, so let's look in Albany and vicinity, which is an A. And we'll look at something in, in the city of Albany. So you would have to key an A, and then you just put in the first three letters for so Albany. ALB. ALB. And after you do that, you press the return key. The next screen that it'll take you to asks you for a Yellow Pages uh, business category, which is a Yellow Pages heading. And if you wanted to know all the florists in Albany, you would just type in florist in this category. And again, your screen tells you to start search. And you will alphabetically then get all the florists in the Albany area tells you there are six screens and to get to that other screen there's a page forward key up here and you can look through as many as you like. All right now these are all the Albany floors alphabetically. That's, right. That's right. There's one other feature in Yellow Pages I'd like to show you so go back to main menu and back to Yellow Pages. So I hit a B. Right. Again we'll look in Albany. Okay, for A. And the city town of Albany. So I hit A and then A, L, B. Good. Okay. And then press your return key. You'll notice there's a business category, a brand name file. Um, if you wanted to get your car repaired and you wanted to know the authorized dealers in Albany, uh, what kind of a car do you have? Datsun. Okay. Why don't you press the return key to get to brand name? and just type in Datsun and that'll give you the Datsun dealers in Albany. You would then depress the start search key. Okay. Yeah, there's the one that we bought our car from. Okay. Um, why, why don't we give them a call? I mentioned there was an automatic dial feature on here. Mm -hmm. um, I want to show you how you can do that now. And what we'll do, we'll call them and you can ask them how late they're open tonight. Okay. Mm -hmm. It tells you to dial a number. You just press the dial key and you type the letter that's associated with the number that you want to call, which is a B. B. Okay, your telephone will ring. You depress the line two button, pick up your phone, and you'll hear some, some ringing in there. And what's happening is the computer is dialing a number and it'll call you back. And then when they answer, you can just ask them how late they might be open. A popular part of the system has been the auto dial feature. Um, this is where the customer can automatically dial a number that appears on the screen. Yes, could you tell me how late you'll be open this evening, please? Thank you. Until 9. Thank you. Okay, and that's, the, that's, that's all you have to do to automatically dial a number. And you can use the auto dial feature on any of the screens that have telephone numbers on them. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was white pages, and you have to go back to main menu to get there. Okay, and white pages would be C. That's right. And white pages is broken down into business, residence, and government listings. So let's look up someone you know, like, like your father. So we look in the residence listings, which is B. Okay, and I put in the information that you know. All right, so Castleton, and that would be CAS? That's right. And last name, and first name. That's about all you need. Okay. Do you know what street he lives in? Yeah. You just need the first initial. 
All right, and then house the, number? The first digit. Okay. And start your search. That's it. Okay. There's only one other feature that I want to show you, and you have to go back to main menu. And those are the public announcements. Okay, so I hit E. That's right. And you can select any you want. We have weather, horoscope, sports, or Joyce Brothers. Okay, so if I wanted to see Joyce Brothers, I key in E. Right. As you can see, there's more than one screen of information, and you just page forward to read through it. To get back to main menu, you just hit your main menu key, and you've seen all the features now. There's only one thing that you need to know. The user's manual is left behind with and both residents and business screen, users an with a notation of a number that they can use to call us if they have any trouble operating or using the system and that drops your line. Okay, that sounds simple enough. And that's it. You're totally trained now. The business participants in the trial have found many uses for the service. An insurance company uses it to verify names and addresses on medical claims. The purchasing agent of a large university uses it to reach sources of supply not easily obtained from other media. A financing company verifies names and addresses on credit applications and much more. As a matter of fact, two of the business users have asked if it would be possible to keep the service after the trial ends because it has been so successfully integrated into their operation. A communication solution to a business problem. They like what they have, but they want more. Such features as zip codes, cross-referencing, and automatic redialing. The residential users found the operation of the service easy to learn and the public announcements very useful. But it would be overstating the case to say there are no unfavorable responses. They feel the terminal is too large for their homes and they dislike returning to the main menu. They would like to access other screens during auto dial. The business users also feel the terminal is too large and are having problems accessing the desired yellow pages heading just as they sometimes do with our printed product. Valuable input to us for the next trial, where the depth and scope of the Albany trial will be broadened with a larger user population, a smaller and more attractive terminal, additional services and system enhancements such as color, graphics, animation, textual advertising information about products, prices, and specials, and other features now under development. From what has been seen so far, EIS, Electronic Information Service, is an exciting prospect. Will it be widely accepted? Will it have long-lasting value? Can it be offered profitably? We don't know yet, but we're working on it.